Hi guys, welcome back. Uh, we're going to continue our lecture on seam manipulation. We're going to do slightly more complicated stuff with our seams today. Um, not too much more, um, still pretty easy. And then we're going to work our way into how to add fullness. Um, so again, just to reiterate, all of the sort of seam manipulation and dart manip manipulation we've done so far. So in the first lectures I did, um, they just changed the sort of construction and look of the uh, garment. Again, darts instead of seams or multiple darts instead of a singular dart or vice versa. Um, but they don't actually change the shape or the fit of the garment. And we're maintaining and preserving that fit, keeping it full where it needs to be full, keeping it um, pinched in where it needs to be pinched in, basically um, keeping it very close to the body as well. We're not creating any sort of silhouette away from the body, any sort of flare or fullness or break. Um, we're just changing the way that it is constructed um, uh, in case you like the way it looks or you want to play around with some contrasting fabrics or something like that. So um, let's go back to the skirts. So the last time in our first uh, seam manipulation video, we did a bunch of different seams in place of the darts. And again, I'll do the back. Um, again, really the mo main reason I'm doing the back instead of the front um, is because we are already starting out with one dart in the back um, instead of two darts in the front. But if you watch the dart manipulation, that's not really a hard thing to get around because we can easily make two darts into one or eliminate them altogether. Um, but <clears throat> we're going to look at the back, so let's just assume the back again doesn't really matter. Here's the full skirt. Again, this would be our center back down here. We have one dart on either side. So I kind of want to take it back to, um, I don't know if you guys remember if you did or not, hopefully you do, um, my talk in FP12 when I would talk about um, uh, flat construction. And um, there's sort of the general rule that, um, of course, you need uh, some sort of dart or seam in woven garments to allow for close fit. Um, stretch, of course, or knit, you don't because it stretches around your body, but since woven fabrics don't, they need to have that structured or almost sculpted in there uh, using darts or seams. Um, so the general rule is uh, on skirts, um, and again, especially the back, um, uh, it's another reason I'm sort of focusing on the back is because most of our sort of fit issues in the, uh, occur in the back of the skirt. Because of course, if you remember, that's basically where we have, so if this is us from waist down, uh, that's where all the fit is, in the butt. So we need this to kind of go out and around like this. So this is where the fit is. We need it to go from a sort of smaller area to a bigger area, um, and so and so, so on and so forth. So if you remember when I was talking about how you to know um, if your seams or darts are accurate to create fit, um, what I would mention is they are fine so long as they pass through that point of fullness or that apex. So I drew my point of fullness there. And remember, we also talked about how darts point toward that area. And darts can pretty much work just so long as they're pointing toward that area of fullness because the point of the dart will create that area of fullness. Now, um, with seams, again, the rule is that you can achieve any sort of fit that you want or the accurate fit that you want so long as your seam is passing through those dart points. Now, in all of the examples we did in the previous uh, or um, uh, seam manipulation part one video, um, we used that original dart. So all those seams had to pass through those points because the seams that we created basically used this original dart as the first part of our seam. But we can go away from that. We don't have to use the actual dart. The only thing that we have to do is go through those points of fullness. So for instance, let's create a skirt that doesn't make, use these darts. Let's use a skirt like, oh, let's say something like this. Okay? Now, um, that would be, of course, instead of our darts, we'd have these little sort of side panels here. 
Do, do, do. Just like so. Now again, it works, it's fine. There's nothing wrong with it because those seams go through those dart points. And so long as they do, we can make it and we can make it fit. So how do we do it? Okay, well let's start. I'm gonna put a smaller little example and draw it back up here on the side like I was doing before. And we'll, we'll take a look at what our sloper looks like. Now this is gonna be a lot like all the seam manipulation we did before. I'm getting emails. So our thing would be, forgetting what I drew now, <laughs> like this. Doo -doo 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 -doo. And our skirt sloper. Doo -doo -doo. With our dart. Like so. Now let's remember, um, just so we know what these are all supposed to represent. So your center back on here. Again, remember our pattern is on the half. So this would be put on fold. This is both sides. This is our waist up here, our hem down here, our side seam over here. Again, here's side seam, side seam, waist and hem here. Again, this is both halves. This is just one half because of course that's how we make patterns okay so how do we draft this seam out of this sloper with the one dart well we start exactly the same way as we did before oh, I my marker. and we cut out the dart Now this will actually just sort of make it easier. You'll see later on that we could just sort of close, like if you're working with paper or something and you just want to close it, it's fine later, but you can also do it this way. So we cut out the dark. So this is now negative space that is not there. Okay. We did that for everything. We did that um, for all the other seams as well. Okay. Now what I want to do is I want to make this seam. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to cut it out of my pattern piece, making sure that I pass through this point right here. Again, that's the point of our fullness. Now, if your darts do not go all the way down to like, say the full hip boop, 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 on the back, you might just want to extend them. Otherwise, just sort of do your best, um, sort of slit it open a little bit. Um, but so what I'm going to do, and just for a point of reference, I'm going to put the point of fullness, or at least where it should be here. So those are our two points of fullness uh, for each side, and then we have it for here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut this pattern with the shape of this seam. So I'm going to cut this, this seam shape into this pattern. So again, if you want to take measurements or whatever, you know, this is just an example, but you know, if you're being proper about it, you'd, you'd take a measurement or whatever. And we're going to cut, passing through that point of fullness, coming down, something like that. Okay? So what you have is you have this pattern piece, and you're done with that. You don't have to do anything else to that. Okay? So that's this guy right here. Boop, boop, boop. He's finished. He's done. That's your final pattern piece for this guy right here. Boop, 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 boop. He's cut too, obviously. And let's sort of, I'll give him a nice solid bright line so you can see that. Okay. So now what we have here is we have this, but we have this dart. So what I want to do is um, I want to essentially close this dart. So what happens is I'm going to line up this dart leg with this dart leg. And if you haven't cut this out, you can just fold it like if you're working with paper. 
um, or you can use the join piece tool in OptiText. And in any case, whatever software or paper that you're using, you want to match up this dart leg and this dart leg, essentially eliminating this area. What will happen is this section right here will pivot up uh, when you turn it. So it's basically going to pivot on this point of fullness, boop, and you're, it will pivot this area closed. So what happens, again, we're going to take it and sort of pivot it closed. So it will look like this. Okay, so essentially that uh, part was that was there, uh, that was there, got rotated. As it rotated, we matched the two dart legs together here. We're combining it together so I can now take that away. It's no longer a line or a dart because of course we don't have any of that here. And that is our second pattern piece. Um, we kicked up this and essentially you can see what we did so remember I talked a lot about um, how you get fit and it is sort of forcing unlike uh, lines together well we can see exactly where that dart kind of snuck into it snuck into this area of the seam um, and we can see that right now in the flat pattern because well, it looks like a dart right when we put it together um, and again, that's where our fit is going to be hidden right now. It's going to be hidden in that seam, especially in that area of that seam. It's no longer up here. We basically just kind of rotated it down here when we closed it. So we closed it and we shifted all of that fit. Is my camera working? Okay, sorry about that. Um, the camera froze for a second. Um, I don't know if you noticed that. I was off camera, but it's holding the marker very, very still. Anyway, so um, we created this new fit um, with this dart. So if I sort of separate it, you can see the two pattern pieces. So I'm going to take this center panel out um, and just sort of draw it right next to the original one. And again, here's our side panel. Um, we didn't have to do anything extra to that. It does sort of kick up that waist a little bit more, get a little bit more curve, but it will essentially look like this. These are our two pieces, and that's how we um, go ahead and create um, uh, seams that don't uh, go through the dart. So essentially all we have to do is make the seam and then close the dart. So let's do a different example. And then I'm going to do a really crazy example, if you're ready for it. I don't know if you are, because you're someplace else. It's really sad. I wish you weren't. Okay, so um, let's do a little bit of another example. Um, this is a lot of times where I'd ask you guys to come up and draw an example on the board. Um, but I can't. If you guys want me to sh do a particular quick draft like this on an example, email it to me. I'll do it. I'll do a student request via email. Um, okay, but again, we're going to do it slightly different. So um, all I really needed to do, again, is pass through my points of fullness. So let's do something. Let's do kind of like the reverse of what we did before. Um, let's do... Oh like this pretty crazy right but again um, it follows our uh, necessary uh, details it goes through my points of uh, fullness and that's all I need to do um, because there's corners right here I will say it might give you a little bit of point spot it doesn't go through it kind of corners right there so you might get a little bit of point spot um, but let's see how we do it anyway Like always, we go ahead and start with a skirt flipper, one dart, just like so. Okay, fantastic. 
Um, now what I'm going to do is, uh, at this point, so let's just a little bit of a reference. Remember, this is my center back, so we know kind of know this is my center back here. Um, so what I would do to cut the seam, and let's just go cut the seam first. Uh, obviously, we'll cut the dark, pull the dark, whatever else, but we'll do that next. Um, point of fullness right here. Okay. So when I cut, I'm going to cut like so. That's that right there. Then I'm going to go down and do this. It doesn't go right to the center. It's a little bit before. Right like that. Okay. Now, this piece is finished. It's done. I don't need to do anything else with it. Except, of course, all the things that you always have to do to finish a pattern. Add your seam allowance. Add your grain line. Add the pattern information. Add your notches. But as for drafting, I don't have to do anything. And that's that little piece. Let's make it. There. We're done there. Okay. Now, what about the rest? Well, we do the same thing before. We close this dart. And so, if we've already cut it out, or if you, you can just fold it shut if you're working with paper. But essentially, now this section here. Boop, 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 boop. This is the section that's going to basically get rotated up like this and when we close our dart legs, right? So we're going to take this section, because this is negative space now in here. This doesn't exist. This gets boop, rotated up around this point. So you just go up around like this, and we close our dart. So what is that going to look like? So we take this section and rotate it up to close the dart. So it's going to kind of kick up the waist on this side a little bit. And as this shuts, we're going to get the dart in here. Okay, you can see that dart as after we took that shape and rotated it shut matching up our dart legs here and, boop, boop, boop. and now there's our finished piece i'll take it apart to take it separate so we can see what our two pieces look like separated again these are going to match up perfectly because there is no fit here the fit exists only mm -hmm. in here where we need it. Okay. That's what our two pieces are going to look like. That's what the pattern would look like to create this skirt. So pretty easy. So basically what you do is um, make your seam and then close your dart. And it's going to sort of warp it. And again, you know you're on the right track from when you close your dart, when you can sort of, that dart never goes away. Even though we close it, even though we get rid of it, even though there is no dart in this finished version, um, it always kind of is sneakily there. And you can see it in that seam right there. And it's there and it's working to maintain your fix. Again, we've done lots of different manipulations. We've changed this seam uh, uh, here, there, and everywhere. Um, uh, uh, but it is still the same shape. Okay, I'm going to do one more example. It's going to be a little bit different and a little bit more tricky. It's going to be kind of the advanced version. So let's get rid of these. Boop, boop, boop. Now thus far, we've done seams that utilize where the dark was. You know, our princess seams and side panels and things like that. And in this lesson, we looked at ones that just pass through the point of fullness, which they always have to do. Um, but here is a particular example that has to take into consideration a couple of extra advanced techniques. Early one. Let's, okay, so here's, 
going to use my awesome colors to at least help make this make a little bit of sense. So there's my points of fullness on the skirt, okay? Waist, side seams, hem. Here's where the original darts were. So again, they're not there now, but these, this is where they would have been, okay? On the sloper. And then this is the seam that I want to do. Okay, so what it's doing is it's going through where the original dart was, but it's also going through those points of rotation, so this is fine, okay? So let's look at the pattern and see what we do to create this seam. So here we are. Let's make it. Yeah. So we can really see what's going on. Okay. A little neater. Sorry. Drawn all wonky. Okay. So um, here's our pattern. Here's our skirt sloper. Again, center back, hem waist, side seam, dart, point of fullness, right here at the tip of the dart. Okay? So, you might be thinking, oh, I'm just, this is a little different. And it is. It certainly is. So, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to cut below the seam or the point of fullness, so the seam below the point of fullness, as well as the dart. So we're going to cut the dart out of there. So again, we're pretty familiar with that. We cut that negative space of the dart out of there. It no longer exists. Okay, bye-bye. Then we cut from the point of fullness down. Okay, so if we take a look, that would look goes to that corner there. So basically like so. Okay. Um, all right. Now we have two pieces, right? I have this piece and I have this piece. Okay, so I'm going to separate them. We have our center front panel and we have, oh sorry, back and we have our side back panel. Okay? So separate them into two pieces. Now, if I were to simply do this, it would it would look like this. Okay? But that's not what we want. We want this wiggly bit. Okay? So, um, we take this and let's separate our pieces. So here we are. There's our center back. This is our side back. This guy would still be on fold. But now what we have to do is we have to do a couple added things to get this shape curve up here. Okay? So what we have to do is we kind of have to take a little bit of measurements um, uh, and really understand how this curve is intersecting with our dart and where it's going. So what I want to do is, I know where this is, that's the end point, that's the point of fullness, which of course is still here, right? 
at that point, which was the original tip of our dart. What I need to know is where this intersects with the dart here, okay? And again, we're designers, we can put it anywhere. So we can play around with it all we want. But let's say that it's, oh, two inches above that point of fullness. So what I need to do is I need to measure up two inches. So again, I'm saying that this distance here from the point of fullness to where it intersects the original dart is two inches. And again, I'm pulling that out of my butt because I'm a designer and I can do whatever I want. If you want it to be three inches, you want it to be four inches, just matters to you where you want that to be intersection. This is all has to do with sort of style and design. So it doesn't have to always be two inches to do this. It's whatever you would like it to be. So I'm gonna measure up two inches here, and I'm gonna measure up two inches here, okay? So now that I have those marked on my pattern, what I can do is I can start to cut out the rest of the seam. Um, and in sections, because of course we're working with two different pieces now. So if I look at this center piece, which is essentially this guy in here, I have to look at where this line was and where this line kind of cuts through it. So if here is that intersection point, what does this line do? Oh, it comes up here, okay. So what I have to do, is cut it, doesn't go all the way to the center back, like so, okay? So this red part is now this seam, just like that, okay? So what I'm gonna do, I've also cut this, so I'm gonna take this piece, take this piece and stick it on here, okay, as part of that piece, because you can see, it is part of that piece. It's part of the side back. We're talking about this little area right here. And again, it's part of this side panel piece. So I need it to not be part of the center back piece anymore. I need it to be part of the side back piece. So I'm going to take this whole little triangle piece. And since I cut it off, it's no longer going to be part of this center back piece it's going to be part of the side back piece. So I'm going to add it boop, right here. Okay, there it is. So I did it to show you that this is a little piece being added, but of course there's no different. It becomes incorporated completely into our side back piece. Okay, so now, We've got this. Now I need this little bump, this little bump here. And again, that is representing a piece of the side back that should be part of the center back, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut, we already cut this part, I'm gonna cut this part of the seam out of the side back. So that's from this mark to this mark, right? So this little curve gets cut out, okay? This little bump, okay? And it gets put in here, okay? So this gets bit out of there, cut out of there, and put onto our center back piece. And it becomes completely incorporated. Okay? And this actually, this is only, I really want to make sure. So it looks a little bit weirder, but this will be perfect, perfect, perfect. And then still at that point of fullness, you're going to get these weird sort of shape seams, but they'll still diverge. They'll still diverge. They shouldn't match up perfectly. They will maintain this sort of shape that they have, uh, this sort of contouring shape. Um, but you still should say these sort of lines diverge um, to create the fullness. And that's how we would create a more complex seeming like this. Now, if that seemed a little hard uh, and a little complicated, well, it is. It's sort of getting, getting to the more complicated end of seam manipulation. 
And um, you might not be quite ready for it, but again, um, once you sort of master the other ones, it's, it's not too far of a leap. It's actually, you know, pretty easy. Um, uh, you just have a couple extra steps to have to do. So I'm going to conclude um, uh, seam manipulation right now. Uh, sorry about the video split. My camera stopped working in the middle of it, so my unintentional two-part seam manipulation. Um, and we'll come back and we'll talk about uh, uh, pattern fullness and how to create fullness. So we'll actually start changing the shape um, of our patterns uh, instead of just changing the seams and darts and not changing the shape. So um, let's mess around with the areas of fullness. So for all these examples, and this also includes the flared skirts that I was doing, the fullness is even all the way around because every time I spread it, I spread it the same distance. So when you spread it, that same shape. So that means I'm really talking about the shapes of the triangles that you get. So if this is this, and this was like this, if these triangles in here are this all the same, throughout your piece, your fullness is gonna be the same. That means the size and, and number of your flares are gonna be the same throughout your ruffle or your flared skirt or whatever you're working on. But what if that's not what you want? So let's take an example where that's not what we want. Let's take an example where I want all my sort of fullness and ruffles in one area of the skirt. So let's make a skirt this from the piece window. So here's another example. There's another example of my skirt. And I'm going to make that same sort of little ruffle at the bottom. So basically the top is going to be the same. So the first steps of, you know, cropping to length and then cropping out um, uh, or cutting out um, this little bottom flounce will be the same. But let's say I want something where it's like a little bit asymmetrical. So let's say I want like some kind of full, you know, full ruffles here on the sides. I want them to kind of maybe cascade up a little bit. Here in the middle, I don't want anything. And then here on the other side, I want it, you know, I, want, I still want it to be symmetrical. I should draw it a little bit more symmetrical. Sorry, this whiteboard shakes because it's not real well mounted. It's just sitting on my easel, easel, so I get a little bit of wiggly lines sometimes. And we'll drop this back out. So this is a nice example because it's pretty much the same thing as we did before, but it's a little bit different. So we have areas, we have two different things that are going on. One, we now have um, a hem that it's not straight across. We have a hem that goes up and then down, okay? So we have to put a little bit of shape into this hem. It's a little bit longer on the sides. And it's a little bit shorter up here in the front area. Now the second thing that's going on is basically this area here in the center it has no fullness. There's no fullness in this area, okay? The fullness is all in the sides. So here we have no fullness, no flares. It's all here, okay? So how are we going to do that? So this is how we do it. So again, we start with our skirt sloper. And what I'm gonna do is I'm assuming, so same thing, we have to crop it to length and I need to crop it to the overall length. So if this was, you know, if this is the full length of the skirt, if this is waist to ankle, I need to crop it here. And that's the longest length here. So I'm just gonna crop it straight across like this, okay? So let's assume that I've already done that and then I cropped across like this and this is like this so we're getting, you know, a, a shortened skirt. And again, if, you're, if your skirt is full length, you don't need to do that, but we're just going to assume that this is less than, um, again, judging by proportions that I'm using, is going to be less than um, full length. Okay. Now the next thing that we need to do is we need to cut in 
the curve. So we need to cut in this. Now this probably could be done at this first step, but I want to break it up into sort of really easy, manageable chunks. So what I need to do is I need to figure out how much higher it is here at center front, center back, or wherever we're working on, than it is over here on the side. So let's say it's, oh, I don't know, three inches, okay? And we kind of want this overall arc to be determined. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna cut in, so here's, I'll measure out three inches here, because remember, this is the center, so this is doubled, so this, this line here is representing the middle of this pattern here, center front, center back. Again, whatever we're working on, doesn't matter. Then I'm going to basically cut in that curve of how the hem will um, uh, change length from the center to the side. Now, once I have that, I can basically get rid of this little piece right here because we don't need it anymore. We toss that away. Okay. Now that we have this, do, 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 what we can do is cut this line, okay? So what I'm gonna wanna do is I'm going, depending on where I cut, I'm gonna need to know either the length from here to here, and it's probably helpful to know the difference from here to here. And of course, since this is straight, I also know, because this is three inches, that the difference between this and this will be three inches. Okay? So, um, if that doesn't make sense, don't worry, but it should make sense. Um, so again, I need to know this distance. So let's say that this is four inches. And then of course that would obviously make this one seven inches, right? Because if this is three inches here, from here to here, three plus four equals seven, right? Um, so I'm gonna measure seven inches out here, and I'm gonna measure four inches up here. Oops, sorry, that's a very funny looking four. And then cut across, and we're gonna cut across straight because our seam here is straight. So we cut across there like that. Those are my little scissors in case you haven't figured that out. Um, this is now finished. This whole top part is the same as this. We don't have to do anything more to it. It gets put back over here for our final, you know, you still got to add grain and pattern name and notches and all that good stuff, but we don't have to do any more physical drafting to it. But this area down here becomes now what we need to work on and what we need to apply our slash and spread. So I'm going to cut it out and move it up here so I can show you a little bit better, just like before, how that's going to work. Okay, so we have the piece and it looks like this. Now remember, this is still our center. So center front, center back. So center front. And um, here's our side seam over here. And now we're going to, you guessed it, cut it up. Now, I'm not gonna just go ahead and cut it in thirds though, evenly, because remember, we are not doing an even fullness. There is virtually no fullness in this middle section. So what I need to do is I need to figure out how far in this is and how much distance the fullness is going to get. Now this looks, the way I drew it, it's about 50-50. So this distance from center front to where the fullness begins is about the same as this distance here. Okay, maybe it's a little bit, but let's just, set, let's just assume that this, this distance here is the same as this distance here, okay? So uh, again, it's about 50-50. So what I need to do is I need to cut it in a way to isolate this area of fullness from this area. So again, like I said, it's about 50-50. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find out where the middle of the piece is and 
that is where the first cut is going to be. I'm not going to cut anything on this side, none at all, okay, which is going to keep this flat. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut now three times, or cut this section, I should say, into thirds. Okay? So I actually have four pieces right now, okay? I have this center piece, one, and I have these guys over here, okay? Now this is also getting to be a point where it's really important to start numbering. Because we have this hem, which kind of flows like this, all these pieces are now different. So their order really matters or else you'll have, you won't get this sort of nice flow in the hem. You'll get it kind of going up and down and up and down and it'll be kind of weird and really super wonky. So again, you're gonna want to keep your pieces numbered. Um, good habit to have whether you super need it or you, or you don't um, because then you'll just be in the habit of doing it. Um, okay, so now we have four pieces and you guessed it, we're going to rotate it and I'm gonna show you how it looks like when we rotate it. Um, again, really important, um, maybe I do this, but these don't really need to go up here. Um, so they're not tucks, they're not pleats or anything like that. Actually, I should, have, I should have drawn it a little bit more like that where the lines don't go into the hem. Um, that would be more accurate because again, we're gonna do it the same way as we did it before. We're gonna keep these points together here. So this distance up here is preserved. So this distance always stays the same. May get curvy, of course it will get curvy, but it needs to fit in right here. So it can't change, it can't overlap, which would make it too small to fit into the seam. You can't spread it out, which would make it too big to fit into that seam. So we're going to, again, keep center front on grain. So there's number one, and we keep this nice and straight along with our, our straight of grain. Then we're gonna start to kick out our pieces. So there's two, I'm gonna take two and pivot it out. Number three, do the same thing. And number four, again, once more. These should be, you'll be see a lot more of a curve. I'm gonna draw these a little bit more like how they would actually look. It would be kind of cur curving up as we go. Okay, so what I did is um, you can see I have this larger chunk here that isn't doing anything. And now I have my, my slash and spread spaces here into the side. And what happens is I now trace this whole thing, and this would be a little bit longer. It'll probably be flanged like this a little bit more. And then that becomes our whole piece. This whole thing becomes our piece. Everything is our whole pattern piece. And this, when sewn in here, will become this. Because we isolated our fullness over here on this side of the little, you know, ruffle down here, that's where we're gonna get the fullness. We're not gonna get any fullness in the middle because we didn't do anything there, okay? Now, let's look at another version. We're going to change it up a little bit, and again, everything is going to be like a little bit of a variation on that same sort of concept. So let's do a skirt like this. Let's shape this connecting seam now. Let's make it. We had a little. Make it fun. Let's make it like this. Ooh. Okay. And then let's also 
put a little bit, where should we make it full? Let's make it full in the front, we make it full. So we're gonna make it, and I'm gonna make it completely flat over here. And this is gonna be fairly even. I'm gonna have a little bit of fullness here, but I want like a lot of fullness actually right here in the middle part. Let's, let's draw what I mean. So something like this, where we have fullness all the way across, we have flares and we have ruffling all the way across, but I want it to be particularly large in the middle here, like sort of framed by this little U shape. So it's not even fullness all the way around. And not only is it not even fullness, but it's, st it's still fullness all the same around, still flares, but we're having bigger flares as opposed to smaller flares. Okay, so um, let's take a look at our sloper. No, let me just put that dart in. La la la, can't forget the dart. Okay, again, you know, just to repeat, we're going to cut to the to the length here, you know, we're assuming it's, again, not um, full length, but I've already re reiterated that a few times. Now, what I'm going to do is I need to know the measurements of this curve here. So, again, this is our center front, center back, whatever, whatever side we're working on. Let's assume, you know, we're working that from here. Here's our center front, center back here. So I need to cut in this shape for my seam, okay? So what I need to know is um, what's the distance between here and here? What's the distance between here and here? What's the difference between here and here? And again, like, you know, uh, you might be, oh, that's a lot of measurements. If you specifically have to make something exactly the way this is, you know, if you are not pattern making your own designs, um, you have to take all these measurements and put them into consideration. If you are just sort of pattern making a design out of your head, you can kind of be like, ah, that looks good. You know, um, so it depends. Um, and again, you know, we always hope that we are gonna always be making our own patterns. But if you are not, you have to kind of get good at taking measurements and, and recreating shapes. But again, eyes are also really important. So you can, for the most part, eyeball it. So here it is. This is the line I'm going to cut. And this is, you know, this distance here will be the length of the ruffle here. Um, this is the length of the ruffle right here. Um, and of course we're representing this shape, which is gonna be that seam right there. Okay, so we cut it out. Boop, boop, boop. Again, this part is done. Let's add this up here. We don't have to do anything more to this shape. I know that looks a lot different, but don't worry. Um, so I'm going to take this shape down here, and that's what we're going to slash and spread to finish off our pattern. Again, this part is done. We don't have to do anything more than that. So I'm going to make that cut, doot, 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 and we put the top to the side, and I'm going to move that little shape up here so we have a little room to work. So again, we have our piece and it will look a lot like this. 
And what I want to do is, so there are flares all the way through and evenly all the way through. There's no part that's just flat like there was before. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, cut this. And now this might be an area where I don't just cut into thirds even though it's ease, even. I kind of do want to sort of um, look at where I want my flares and where I want my fullness. So I see I have like two big flares here in the drawing and two flares over here. And again, even though it might not end up exactly like that, you might get more, still this technique is going to be able to allow for a bigger size, bigger and smaller sizes of flares. That will happen no matter what fabric you use. So now I have um, five cuts. And I have four different areas of slashing in which to get flares from. So there are, again, my five pieces. And again, this is another instance where it's really, really important to number your pieces or else you know before it was the uneven hemline here that we needed to keep looking the way it was here it's this seam right in here uh, that we have to keep looking uh, like this so if I start to rearrange these pieces it's no longer to going to match up uh, nicely with this seam up here so we really 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 in these instances need to number our pieces and make sure we keep them in order now, as I rotate them, as uh, I've mentioned before, we're going to keep all of these points together within the pieces. We're going to keep them touching, not overlapping, not distanced. Um, piece number one, I'm going to keep on grain. Just like all of our other pieces. So there's piece number one. Now, with piece number two, this is this first slash, which will really indicate a first um, flare right in here. Now, what I want to do is, since these flares are bigger, I'm going to kick it out and rotate it out more. Same with this one. I'm going to keep those distances pretty similar because those are my two big flares. Now, with four and five, this slash and this slash, they're gonna be teenier, tinier flares. So what I'm gonna do, this probably comes down a little bit more because we have a pretty dramatic curve. And I'm gonna kick them out just a tiny bit. That's piece number four, and again, tiny little bit for piece number five. Okay, so as we can see, what I did is these first two slashes are really big. These next two slashes are a lot smaller. That's gonna keep these side flares a lot smaller than these middle flares. And you can do this sort of making them big and sort of slowly transitioning if you want a slow transition for fullness to, to, um, other, uh, to smaller fullness or to smaller flares. Now, just to reiterate, um, this will happen because even though these, you know, the number of flares and things like that will have a great dependency on the quality of fabric, this will still work no matter what the quality of the fabric is because you're simply just allowing for more fullness here than you are here. Now this might not fall, like depending if you have a very limp fabric, this might be a number of very small kind of limp flares, um, but there will still be more of them and more overall fullness than there will be out here no matter what fabric you use, okay? Um, Let's push on. Also, too, um, I, I I know you were like, hey, this whole thing, no, the, how is, you know, this might not be exactly how it looks, but this whole piece, right, is going to kind of be our piece that goes into here. And you might be like, how is that going to fit into here? Remember, guys, so this is another, let me do a little bit of an aside here, and, and just very basically, so that's there. But what shapes did we have before? This was the bottom of the skirt. 
What went into it? This. That's where, when this seam gets four straight, we get the volume. And I can show you that. Let me show you an example. Um, and this goes to what I was talking about with the darts, that um, it's only when you get these differences of shapes coming together, um, uh, these different seam shapes coming together, do you get fullness. So right now I'm gonna cut an arc and we're gonna look at what happens to the actual arc shape when you straighten it, when you force it straight. See if I can make this as good as I can with a nice arcy arc. So here's, I just made an arc piece, right? So this is basically this guy right here. You know, you're saying, oh, I can't make that curve shape go into that straight. Well, you can, and when you do, look at what happens. So basically what I'm doing is I'm, I'm taking this and I'm straightening it out. Look, that's a straight line, right? That's how we get it into that seam. And guys, remember, whenever you take a different shape, seam and force it into you know another seam so this this you're forcing this curve into a straight line and whenever you force something to like that with fabric you get volume so there it is there's your flare so I'm basically again I'm just doing this and then when you so I'm taking that curve and then making it straight there's your straight line you can see it best against me I guess because we're in black today but we do it on the side so it's flat not flat. It's flat, not flat. So that's, you know, that's basically the whole principle behind pattern making is making lines that don't fit together, forcing them together, and creating three-dimensional shapes based on that. So, you know, after you've been doing this for a while, you can see negative spaces like this between shapes and understand the three-dimensional um, shapes that they will create once they are put together. I mean, this is flat pieces, but I don't see this as flat. I see this as ruffles just based on this difference in shape of uh, a seam. You get a curved seam that must go straight, you're gonna get ruffles. You get a, you know, a seam like this that comes together, you're gonna get a bulge of fullness at the point. So again, should be stuff that you look at. Um, <laughs> This might be a long video because I don't know when I started. <laughs> and I feel like I've been doing this for a long time, but I still have a couple of things I want to go over. I want to go over at least one more of this example if you can tolerate it. I know this is like a detox of pleats right now. So um, let's take another example. So in all of those situations, I was creating flare. So that means that the fullness that you get again is just when this straight line gets pushed out or this curved line gets pushed into a straight line there's no tucks there's no pleats there's no nothing there to create that fullness and what that does is it creates these um, flares that really have this um, kind of a line or break to them so you're gonna get flares that really kind of look like this they're going to kind of stick out like this, you know, um, because of that push, that push out. And you can see it, you know, um, uh, I'll try it at a different angle so you can kind of see that that angle push out. So here's straight, we make it as flat, and then we flatten it out. And so you can see that that line happening. Ooh, we get that push outwards away from the silhouette. We get a break. As, uh, to, uh, as, as one would say. Um, but there are other ways to use flash and split to create fullness that aren't like this, that don't create flares. So that's also why I said that, you know, <laughs> gotta be careful. It's best to draw these flares where the lines don't actually connect to the seam because that would indicate either a pleat or a flare. Um, okay, 
So what if we want that? What? So first of all, what would happen, we would still obviously have to have this seam here. And let's do like little pleats or tucks or something. Now, they will not get that outward shape like this. They'll hang much more in line with the silhouette. Now, they might have some kind of kick out. But let's do, oh, let's say, let's do some, looks like a little box pleats or something. I don't know. like that they have to open up kind of like this now depending on whatever pleat you want it this is the same technique that you would use no matter what it really just depends on how far you kick it out and how you fold it up so this technique can be used for knife pleats for box pleats for tucks if you don't want the pleats, um, but it's the same thing for any one of those. So um, we're gonna start, oh, let's put our darts in. Uh, here's our sloper, and again, just like before, we're assuming that this is cut to length. So if it's not full length, you've cut it to the appropriate overall length. And we're gonna do again the same thing where we cut wherever, however long this is gonna be. So let's say, um, I don't know, this is eight inches. Something like that. Does you know? It doesn't matter. Just, so we're going to cut eight inches across. Measure up here eight inches along our center front, center back. Boop, 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 boop. That's, there it is. La, la, la. Now again, you can probably guess what's going to happen. This is all we need to do here if this is what we want. So we get rid of that. We take that rectangle part and. We get this. Don't forget to remember which is your center front. Okay, now you guessed it. We're gonna cut it up. Now, in these cases, every time you make a slash, you will get a pleat because you're gonna be physically folding the pleat in. The difference, so this is not uh, the same as the flares where every time you slash it, you may or may not get a flare depending on the quality of the fabric you will absolutely get a pleat every time you make a slash because you are physically folding in that pleat um, when you make the garment. Um, this, when you make the flares, you're just sewing in that seam and pushing out the fabric. And you're hoping that you know whatever the fabric pops up like this, that it is gonna pop up like this. Um, and again, this paper's stiff, so it's a really great example of, a, of what a stiffer fabric might do, give you these sort of one really big flare. But if I was showing you the same example in like, you know, something like tissue paper, or um, uh, 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 if it was a fabric example, something very limp like jersey or chiffon or something like that, you know, I'd be getting little tiny small flares because it doesn't have that stiffness to it. So all you can really do when you're slashing and spreading and making your little arcs for flares is, you know, relying that on what the fabric is going to do when you pop it out. Um, uh, in this instance, again, you're every time you make this cut, uh, when you physically put the whole thing together, you're going to be folding the fabric together and sewing it down that way. So um, every time you make a cut, it is exactly going to be in that location. So how many do we have? Well, we got one, two, three. Here's our center front. Remember, that's our center front. So I'm going to uh, measure them out how I want them to be. Remember, this is, you know, I got a pleat right here in the middle or a solid place right in the middle uh, of my center front. So this is going to be about half difference and distance, and these will be about whole distance. So I need to make uh, three cuts and I'll make one, you know, pretty close to the center front because again, the, uh, the it's going to span this side over here, it's on fold, and then about double that over here, and same thing over here. Okay, so I have my cuts, that'll give me four pieces.
Okay, so um, what will happen is um, at this point when I spread, I am no longer keeping these points together. To create the pleats, I'm putting down the pieces and moving them out separately. Okay, so what does that mean? So here's piece number one. Going to go on grain like this. Not going to rotate it. Again, the rotating uh, doesn't happen. And again, this is part of the reason why we don't get that kick out too um, uh, that the flares will give us. I'm going to put two. I'm going to measure my pleat distance. So this is going to be everything it takes to create that pleat. So um, if we're looking at, you know, let's put one of my examples from before. Um, here, so like, if I'm going to put a pleat in this, this piece of fabric, you know, I did box pleats. So that's two knife pleats together. So I'd have to fold it like this. For one half and the same so there it is Ooh, there it is and then again on the other side for a box pleat that's pretty much the difference between box pleats and knife pleats box pleats are just kind of like two um, knife pleats in one just pointing toward each other so again, there, oh, it's a little lopsided. Well, anyway, there it is, it's a little lopsided. One side is a little bit bigger than the other, as you can see, but generally they would be the same. Let me see if I can even it out a little bit. Oh. Trying to rush through pleating. So there it is, basically that's your box pleat, okay? This is what it looks like on the outside. Oh, well, this is the outside. This would be inverted. And you can actually um, do it any way you want. So um, the distance that you're measuring is essentially, let's get a good view of this, um, everything from these points. So everything up here and like in here. So um, if I close it like this, this is sort of what we have. If when I open it up, this is what you're measuring out at this stage. So see, like here would be here would be piece number one. This line is the edge of piece number one, and this line is the edge of piece number two. So um, let me just highlight that. So here it is. So again, the distance is enough to fold the pleat back together. These will come back together. So piece, no, piece number one, piece number two. And then again, everything that you're measuring in here is going to be in between your two pieces. And that's gonna be the depth of your pleat. And that's gonna be how much fullness that you get. So you're gonna measure that out. So you can measure out, let's say, oh, you want like a two inches of depth to make your pleat. And then you'll go on and put in piece number two. two. And then you're going to continue doing that, spreading it out two inches. If you want them all the same, of course, you can make your pleats different sizes if you want. Typically, we make them the same size. And we got one more over here. As you can see, this makes it a lot wider, but all this is gonna be folded up in the final version. Two inches, two inches, two inches. Now, your final pattern piece is going to be this whole thing again. So this is our template. And then what we do is we basically trace over the whole thing, la 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 la, to create the pattern piece. Now at this point, it's really important to mark where those pleats are going to begin and end because this is, you know, it's vitally important uh, for your pattern because whoever has to make this 
has to, once they cut it, has to look back at the pattern and see where these pieces are coming together. And this is letting us know basically where those pleat folds are gonna come together and how much is, you know, gonna be these pieces that form uh, the sort of outer part of the uh, fringe or whatever we'll call it. And these are the inner parts that get folded up into sort of negative space and leave little parts in here. And again, we want them to be really easy to see, really easy and clear to know about. Um, so again, now we can use slash and spread to create pleats as well. And you can use this uh, method to create pleats anywhere, any garment, anything, anytime. Uh, again, like a lot of these, I've reiterated, a lot of these you know, we're focusing in on skirts and different things you can do with skirts. You can even make a pleated skirt like this too. All you have to do is slash and spread the whole thing. I don't want to go, there's a little bit, you know, working around the dart and, and um, everything. I'm not going to go exactly into drafting pleated skirts, like the full pleated skirts right now, because I kind of just want to focus on the slash and spread method. Um, but I want to show you the difference of, you know, keeping those top points together and then, but also being able to spread them evenly. So in this instance, we're taking each piece and we're spreading them out evenly, whereas before we were rotating them out. Now you might say, hey Kate, can I do like a reverse? Actually you can, it's not really seen much, but I'll just quickly mention what will happen just so we really understand what's happening with all these um, uh, uh, patterns. So if I were to do that um, in the same sort of context of the sort of fringe skirt, I would have to make them be tucks. And I'll just show you real quick. Again, this is almost an absurd example, but it at least helps to under, you to understand kind of what's going on. So we would have these sort of big tucks here, and then it would come down here. Now this makes no sense. Don't worry. Again, like I said, this is almost an absurd example. But see how it kind of pulls out and then in? So what we would do is we would do that same cut and then when we took the rectangle and cut it up, I would keep the bottom points together and spread open the top in like this reverse fullness. And you might be saying, hey, but if you put it up here, it'd be a peg skirt. Yeah, yeah, it would. That's actually how we do it. Um, at least in, in sort of, in theory. Um, and then these would become the tucks. So I would close these guys up when I sewed it so it would still fit in here, else it wouldn't fit in here. So you get this puff of fullness right here underneath the seam. But then because we maintain this fullness down here, the hem would stay the same size. Hopefully that makes sense. Again, it's, it's a little bit of a, a weird example. But again, I um, just want you to know um, uh, uh, how it would work. So I'm gonna actually probably show something a little bit sim um, simpler to understand, or at least more relevant when it comes to slash and spread within sleeves, um, because then it's super applicable depending on where you want your fullness for puff sleeves. But I'm gonna go ahead and end it right there. I think that was a lot of information for um, one, one lecture. Um, at least we stayed pretty on topic with, you know, kind of skirt ruffles and sort of looking at it. Um, and uh, hopefully 